I'd bet that almost everyone that has experienced Neo 2 all the way through has had some experience with Nujitsu and Animio Magic, the two best friends that you can have in Neo 2. Most people probably already have max proficiency reached with them and have consummated their favorite builds around one or the other, but how many people are still left undecided or have wondered what the other cheek feels like? They have many things in common. Both of them can be tricky to pronounce, but also many different differences. My goal in this video is to examine the pros and cons of both and come to a conclusion, if possible, of which has more benefits. Now sure, it all depends on your approach to playing and whether you favor variety in style or the best brute force method available at the time. The builds are ever evolving as more experimentation takes place in this game. I will make a disclaimer that I personally am more fond of an email than ninjutsu, but throughout my nearly 200 hours so far, I've been accustomed to using both in concert. My favorite build so far has got to be the barehanded build, only made possible and optimum via the buffs that Nemo Magic can provide. I spec most of my skill points in the magic to make the most potent build possible using bare hands. I still remember the first time I had someone come into my world to help me and they melted everything with the Nemo Lightning build. I'm not great with names. So there are some really OP builds that you can use with Nemo Magic. Ninjutsu, from what I can tell, specializes more so in the offensive approach to playing the game. Sometimes you don't even have to move to kill a boss or an enemy. You can just throw your shurikens, safe from a distance. Animio Magic, I think, offers a lot more to it than Ninjutsu does. My reasoning with this is the series of buffs and debuffs that can always be applied to your enemy in any situation. You can get right up close with your enemy with protection talismans, for example, and take no damage even when you get hit. You can get grabbed by the unblockable attacks and still walk away unscathed. It's also a great way to brute force. I suppose Ninjutsu is still better on this approach just in terms of the sheer DPS, but I've gotten some hits upwards of 10,000 using my barehanded build. This is only possible again using an Emil Magic. The great thing that Ninjutsu has going for it is the simplicity. You can stay back away from your target and just throw shurikens. You don't have to press all those buttons, only one. And you can stay safe from any number of pesky AoE attacks and what have you. So this is a really fun way of playing and it's not a whole lot to think about. You do have variety. You have the fire shurikens, you have the kunai, and probably my favorite, the poison shurikens. I know that a few bosses that came into my way, they may not have been so easy for me without poison. Poison is a great way to slowly but surely wear down your opponent. Take down their health without having to do much, but sit back and you know maybe wait out the dark realm or something like that. Other than that, if you look at the skill tree for both of these, I don't feel that Ninjutsu has as much variety as Magic does. Oh, dude. 
I'm in the 80s era? Although I must admit, I really do enjoy little funny things like the Kadama transformation. <laughs> yeah. And the other scrolls that allow you to pretty much go undetected, which would be great for speedrunning if you're ever into that, or just evading the danger without being detected. Oh, that's pretty sick, dude. You can. Dude, I'm taunting in front of this guy and he doesn't see me. <laughs> Hilarious, dude. I think ultimately it does depend on how you play the game and what weapons you decide to use. You could go barehanded, or you could prioritize the Switchglaive. You could just run with your shurikens, or you could get good with the Kasuragami. It really all depends on what you're trying to balance out. If you look at the ninjutsu tree, outside of the shurikens, you don't have a whole lot of options for DPS. You have a couple of tactics that make the game more interesting. You can try and weaken your opponent, you can try and confuse your opponent, but outside of the shurikens and kunai, it's not great for DPS. You can inflict status effects like poison and fire and lightning. Those can be very useful. Over in the magic tree, you have so many different options for spells, a lot of which you can find in the new Jitsu tree, but some that truly make it easier by awakening your opponent or buffing your own attack power. Magic always comes in handy. You can substitute elixirs for life leaps, for example. You can use purification talismans to bring down the yokai's key. There are little great abilities in between that give you permanent boost to your life and key and dark realm resistance. So in general, it's good to have a mix of both. But, of course, if you really want to maximize one or the other, it's always good to put your spec points into one or the other. But that's the great thing about Neo 2. There's plenty of variety for everyone, depending on what type of player you are. I just feel that being with new Jitsu is going to be a little bit limited when you run into your shurikens. I'd actually say that's the same thing for magic as well. When you run out of using your talismans, you're going to kind of have to get back to the shrine because you cannot rely on what you normally could. 